One of the greatest privileges and highlights in life is when we can make a difference for someone by adding value to them through the law of adding value. The best way to influence and lead people is by finding ways to add value to others so we authentically connect with them. When we connect with them through values, especially character values, we can communicate values best. Values like trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, loyalty, and empathy. Our character through our actions reflects our values. Adding value to others connects us with people and helps us communicate with people. My wife and I own a professional gymnastics club, and the mother of one of our gymnasts wrote the following to my wife and me. Dear coaches, thank you for the time and energy you put into the youth at your gym. Over the last two and a half years, I have seen my daughter grow as an athlete and also on a personal level. It is already very apparent to me that the lessons and values that are being taught within your gym walls will be carried with her throughout her life. They say it takes a village, and you both have been an invaluable part of that. Thank you so much for what you do. Sign, Jim Mom. In this chapter on the law of adding value, John Maxwell says, people may forget what you say, but they never forget how you make them feel. To practice the law of adding value as a communicator, John says you must do two things. First, you must live with good values. Living good values enables us to value others. It empowers us to do the second thing, which is adding value to people. Doing the right things at the right times for the right reasons adds value to other people. How we value people determines how we view them. And how we value people determines how they view us too. Sig Ziglar said, if you will help enough other people get what they want, they will help you get what you want. Good communicators, coaches, teachers, and speakers put their audiences first. They think of others before themselves. John Maxwell says, we are people of value who value others and add value to them. Mr. Gray, my seventh grade math teacher, was a great example of someone who poured their life into me. I was really poor at math, C's all the way, but Mr. Gray never treated me or spoke to me like I was anything but an A student. He made me feel confident I could do it, even though I felt like a real dummy at math. He made me feel like he really cared. Because he cared, I naturally liked him too. Caring is a character value skill. Caring is also an action, a skill, and sometimes we can even communicate care without a single word said. Sometimes just good listening shows good caring. To be a good leader, we need to be good listeners, so we hear not only what is being said, but what is not being said, and then we can find a way to add value to others. Adding value to others will lift your likability level too. People are more apt to like you when they sense or feel that you value them. John also says people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yes, just like caring, even character values are skills we can work on, and we should be setting goals for them and working on them daily to grow as a person and leader. In this chapter, as a result of John exploring the Enron event, he discovered that good values become enduring values. Good values are the foundation on which ethical people build their lives. We need those values today more than ever in our world. And more importantly, we need messengers that can communicate those values both in listening and through action in leading by example. Building on those values, John shares the key, the golden rule a value present in almost every culture and religion worldwide. In teaching at a university, I teach the golden rule to my students in my cyber technology ethics classes. The golden rule says, treat others as you would want others to treat you. John says good values are more powerful than rules or laws for helping others. He also says the ultimate goal of the law of adding value is to build your life on a foundation of good values. And so it is. Values are your character. 
We all need to lead in life with character values first. As mentioned at the beginning, my wife and I own a professional gymnastics club. And of course, in gymnastics, the ultimate score is 10.0, 10 However, even those gymnasts who have scored a 10 in the past were not 100% perfect. None of us is perfect in this journey called life. But if we see each person as a 10, then we can expect the best out of people and help them reach their ultimate potential in life and find real joy in the journey. To illustrate the law of adding value further, I want to share a story with you that reflects the law of adding value. This story is about a middle school student named Mikey. After serving my country as an officer in the United States Air Force and serving in the country of Turkey for five years, I returned home to Wisconsin and obtained a teaching job as a long-term substitute physical education teacher at a local public school. It was very exciting to know that I would get back to teaching again. In college, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in physical education. Teaching and coaching were always my passions. The physical education teacher I was subbing for had to take an extended leave from teaching. Therefore, I had a great opportunity to be able to teach long term. Getting to the school on my first day was very exciting. It was even more exciting that this also happened to be the first day of the new school year. So everyone shared in my excitement and readiness for what the new year would bring. Almost like it was yesterday. I remember walking into the school with everyone roaming the hallways and finding their classes. I was so grateful to be back in school again, especially as a teacher. One thing happened, however, right at the beginning of the school day that really changed my outlook on that first day of school. In almost every class I had that morning in elementary school, a different teacher would ask me if I had met Mikey yet. Of course, I hadn't met Mikey yet, because as I found out later, he was a middle school student and I didn't teach middle school until the afternoon. As the morning wore on and as more teachers asked me if I'd had Mikey yet, it was obvious that Mikey would be a real challenge. When I told the teachers I had not had him yet, they just chuckled or laughed out loud. Despite this ill omen, my first elementary school morning went very smoothly. That afternoon, I went to the middle school, ate lunch, and proceeded to my first class. When the bell rang, I entered the gymnasium expecting to see the kids waiting politely for me to arrive. Instead, what I saw was something like out of the movie Animal House. Kids were running everywhere. Some of them had climbed up into the bleachers, and some had their butts in the basketball hoops. Mostly, <laughs> it was just pure chaos. As I walked closer to the middle of the gym, I asked one of the somewhat quiet or at least quieter students if he knew who Mikey was. At that, all the students laughed. Again, I asked where Mikey was, and suddenly a young man from the back of the group walked forward. Other kids backed away as he walked through the middle of the group up to the front where I was standing. This young man said, Hi, Mike, what do you want? And in response, I said, well, Mike, I'm Coach D, and I want you to be the leader in warming up the class today. Mikey's tone of voice immediately changed. I can't lead. I don't know how. I asked him why, and Mikey said, because I've never led anything before. And I said, doesn't matter. I will help you and teach you how to lead. I'll be right here with you. So Mikey and I started our calisthenics and warm-up routine for the class. From that point on, Mikey never acted up, nor did he encourage any of the other kids in the class to act up. The other kids in class followed him and respected him in a very natural way. And for two weeks, Mikey helped me lead the class and he helped provide a teaching environment and structure for what I suspect were the best physical education classes most of those kids had experienced in a very long time. However, my long-term subbing ended prematurely. The teacher I was subbing for was coming back a lot earlier than originally anticipated. At the end of the two weeks on my last day, I was in my office in the locker room, finishing up paperwork and finalizing the grade book. All of a sudden, I heard the door to my office close. When I looked up, there was Mikey with his back to me as he closed the door. As he turned around, I could see huge tears 
flowing down his cheeks. Mikey, what's the matter? I asked. And Mikey's reply to me was profound. Mr. D, what will I do now that you're leaving? You're the only teacher that ever cared about me. Wow. This was the Mikey that all the teachers had warned me about. Without me saying a word to Mikey about how he should change, and just by caring and adding value to his life, he was transformed into a responsible and respectful young man. Unlike others, I saw Mikey as I believed he could be, a Ted, and not what he was living up to, simply because others had him marked or labeled that way. With a little hesitation and concern in my voice, I told Mikey that he would do just fine without me. He just needed to be the leader that he was capable of being. Just like my experience with Mikey, we can all lead and influence others by implementing the law of adding value. The need, desire, and passion for adding value to others in your life are key to living an abundant life based on values. Keep practicing your character value skills and you will stay excited to learn many ways to fulfill the law of adding value to others. And never forget what John says. People may forget what you say, but they never forget how you make them feel. That's the law of adding value.